it's time for another installment of Husker Chat brought to you by Acres Equipment. I'm Jason Jorgensen, as always, joined by Sean Callahan, the publisher of Husker Online. Sean, a lot has happened <laughs> since we last talked. There's been a lot of movement in the Husker football program, at least uh, on your side. What have you kind of sensed from Husker Nation in terms of the deal that Trev Alberts was able to strike with Scott Frost to bring him back next year for a fifth year? Yeah, it was far from an off week around the Husker football last week, Jason. And um, I think it was one of those tough weeks. And I said this all along, it, if they're ever going to make a move on Scott Frost, it was going to have to be obvious. And I still feel it's not in that area. I mean, I, I think you know, you would really split a lot of the fan base by parting ways at the four-year point, especially with how close they've been in some games against very good teams this year. Um, even as far back as last week against Ohio State. And um, I, I, I think Trev said, like, let's figure out a way to make this work. And they came up with a solution. Scott Frost obviously lowered that buyout, which was $20 million um, right now. And now it will be seven and a half after next season, plus lowered his base pay until he actually improves things on the field with wins. Um, so I think it was a huge win for Nebraska to come to that conclusion. And then Scott Frost you know, had to do a very difficult thing in part ways with four assistant coaches. There's never an easy time. There's never a good time to do this thing. Um, you know, sometimes you see coaches not fire guys, but just say, hey, find a job. I'll let you find a job. And you got to tell then. I think in this situation, they said, look, we, we got to make a, a statement that we're going in a new direction right now. And, you know, it, it, you feel for all four of these coaches um, but that's the business of coaching, and it, it, it's not fun uh, when these things happen, but um, Nebraska hasn't gotten it done in the last four years, and they, they've got to figure out a, a new way uh, to get this thing fixed. How much of a challenge is that going to be for Frost to find assistant coaches in a year in which a lot of people realize Frost himself certainly will be on the hot seat from day one? Now, you follow this pretty closely. Will there be a lot of applicants who are – who are okay with saying, Hey, I, I got a one year shot here to help turn this thing around. Well, there's a few things there, Jason, two year contracts and, and maybe even a three year contract for the right coordinator that's guaranteed money. And if your salary can be doubled or who knows tripled um, with the amount of money Nebraska can pay these hires, they essentially have $2.8 million freed up on the salary cap to hire four coaches. And I don't know if they'll spend all 2.8 of that, but that's the amount of money they have. And if you say, look, I can pay you 1.1 million, two years guaranteed, or even three, I don't know if they'd be willing to do that. That's going to get anyone's attention. And coaching coaches don't stay at schools very often for longer than four years as it is. Um, so I think this, you know, era we grew up in where coaches stay at a school for 20 years, it doesn't necessarily happen like that as much. Um, so you would be surprised when you can double a guy's salary on a two-year contract, how many people will want to bet on themselves and take that opportunity. But you're right. It is something to consider um, with, you know, this could be it for Scott Frost. If he doesn't have a good year next year. Today in Husker Chat, we're joined by Sean Callahan. It's brought to you by Acres Equipment. Also in the time since we last talked, uh, tough to see JoJo Doman uh, say he has played his final game as a Husker, but certainly you can understand that as he looks to get healthy and right before uh, going to the NFL Combine. Yeah, I had a hand surgery last week on Monday after the Ohio State game. Played one of his best games of his career against the Buckeyes. Um, tough deal because – you know, right now he needed it repaired. If if he kept playing on it, he could risk possible full reconstruction of his hand. Um, and, you know, he's 24 years old. He can't really sustain another major injury if he wants to continue to play football at the next level. Um, he'll be a 25-year-old NFL rookie next year. Um, so JoJo Doman gave everything he could in Nebraska. He played 51 games here. He's ranked 11th all-time on solo tackles just behind guys like Mike Brown, Broderick Thomas, um, to name a few. So he has given this program everything he could the last six years. Unfortunately, they couldn't win, have a, a great breakthrough win season like you would have liked to have seen for him. But um, I, I think he'll leave here as one of the more fan favorite players we've seen on defense the last few years. 
Well, this week it doesn't get any easier for the Huskers traveling to Wisconsin. The Badgers have been one of the more improved teams all year long. They got up to a rough start, but credit Paul Christ and his staff. They've got things headed in the right direction, and this is a very, very good defense that the Huskers will face on Saturday. Badgers are only giving up seven points per game. Yeah, you look at Wisconsin, and they had the three early losses to Penn, Penn State and uh, Michigan and obviously Notre Dame. And I, I think we were like, well, this is finally going to be that 6-6 six and six type year, or maybe they wouldn't even make a bowl game at that point. Uh, but credit Paul Chris and their program. Defense and running the football – will always take you a long way. They play elite defense. They have all year, and they have finally found a way to run the ball at a way to win. And, you know, Braylon Allen, the 17-year-old, you talk about Jojo Doman being 24, Braylon Allen, their fresh running back, 17. He's gone six straight weeks with over 100 yards rushing and scored three touchdowns, had 25 carries for 170-plus um, against Northwestern last week. Um, so that will be the challenge. I, I am intrigued, though, Jason. They have not seen a quarterback like Adrian Martinez, one that can run and do things with his feet. Noel Vedrill is the only guy with any kind of real mobility they have faced all year. So that will be something to watch. How will their defense respond to Martinez? And can Martinez hurt them with his legs? Do you expect to see many wrinkles from Nebraska offensively? I mean, there's only – I mean, you are what you are, d despite the fact uh, there's some new guys filling in the last two uh, weeks of the season helping with the offense. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see more of that triple option. Um, that has just given teams – I talked to some coaches about that, and they're like, teams in the Big Ten don't know how to defend that. Ohio State was having a hard time with it. Northwestern, as we know, had a hard time with it. I think that triple option, which, as we know, was inspired by you and Kay. We talked off air about this, Jason, and kind of what Josh Lynn uh, does. Nebraska runs versions of that in their offense now, and it's given people problems because you just don't see it week after week. All right. We'll see what uh, happens on Saturday when the Huskers head to uh, Madison. Sean, have a safe trip up uh, north, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Jason. You bet. And that was Sean Callahan, the publisher of Husker Online. Joining us for our Husker chat is brought to you by Acres Equipment. I'm Jason Jordan.